Welcome to Wellness Maricopa at MCC's Mindful Minutes. When you hear the word mindfulness, what comes to mind? Being more centered, reducing stress? With these podcasts, which you can find on the MCC's wellness webpage at www.mesacc.edu forward slash employees forward slash wellness dash employees, you can explore ways to become more mindful and integrate them into your everyday life. Have fun exploring and stay mindful and well. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Gail. Nice to be with you again. It's lovely to have you here again. Um, What mindfulness topic do you have for us today? I thought we would do a little exploration regarding the nature of our own brains. And why is the brain so important for mindfulness? Well, first of all, we have the most magnificent computer system on the planet that's housed within the cranium. And yet we understand the operating system of our phones, our tablets, our computers much more than we do our own brains. Okay. And how can we apply mindfulness to the aspect of our own brain? How do we do that? Well, first of all, I think it's important to understand the nature of our own brains as an operating system. So the default operating system of the brain is not what you might think it is. The default mode is not wired for happiness and joy, although we can cultivate it and we can get there. But the default of the brain is wired for negativity. It's actually called the negativity bias of the brain. And that part of the brain does three things. And unless we wake up and pay attention, we're just on autopilot. So the three things it does is it scans for threats in order to keep us safe. So it's scanning for what is going wrong, what will go wrong, what could go wrong, what may go wrong. Certainly there's something wrong out there. It's always looking for that. And we know people like that. They're the curmudgeons in our life. The second thing it does is that it's really self-referential. It makes me feel solid. My ideas are solid. My opinions are solid. My perspectives are solid. I am the most important thing in the universe. And when operating from that place, we can't always see and hold multiple points of view. So it's just me, the most important one. And then the third thing it does is it operates in past and future. So what happened in the past, I bring forward and predict a future so that, again, I can keep myself safe. So we operate past, future, past, future, and none of those are happening now. The only thing that happens now is the angst that we feel because we're in the past or the future. So that feeling is here in the now moment. So that's the main operating system, the default. Okay. And what else do you have for us? (laughs) (laughs) So how do we find a way to operate from someplace else? So mindfulness practice is a way to put online a different operating system. It's called the task positive system, task positive network. It's a lot like being in flow. So task positive, what does that look like comparatively? It has a focused attention in the moment. So when you're really engrossed in something and your mind is just right there on task, it's like, oh, ease filled here. Is it similar to a runner's high? It is similar to a runner's high. It's similar to a gardener who loses all track of time with, you know, hands in the dirt. So bringing a focus into the right here and, and now. And that's the second aspect. That focus only happens in present moment awareness because the mind is one-pointed. So there is no past. There is no future. There's only right now. And then the third thing is there really is no self because you're one with whatever it is you're doing and how you access that place of flow. So that's called the task positive network. It's a sweet place to be. As you described, the runner's high can be pretty Mm -hmm. sweet. So our practice of mindfulness can bring us to that place. The idea of bringing back a wandering mind. The mind is wandering into the past and the future. We see it happening and we bring it back and we train it to stay. Just stay. And it'll go off. And we train it to stay. We train it to stay. So perhaps we could do a practice. I would love that. All right. Let's start. So like all other practices, the first place to begin is right where you are. 
and get a sense of where the body is located in place and space and simply notice that. Perhaps you have been in the place for some time now and don't even know where you are. So know that place now. And decide if this practice is best served sitting or standing, lying down, eyes closed completely, or just dropping them halfway and unfocused. Begin the practice by feeling where your feet are. Bringing awareness to the actual soles of the feet, a one-pointedness even there. The soles of the feet connected to the earth and the earth answering, receiving you and supporting you. Feel this place. Imagine that you have an inner lens. This lens is awareness itself. Using that lens, become aware of the bottom and where the bottom is connected to the chair, the floor, and feel the body being held and received. And notice that the mind prefers not to stay. The mind is moving. But awareness itself can see the mind has moved. And when that's noticed, we can gently bring the mind back, one-pointedly focused right here. And using that lens of awareness, Scan up the vertebrae on your back, feeling and sensing, noticing how things are, noticing any tightness, tensions, noticing even that the mind moves away once again. Always going back to that default bringing the mind to the body. And this time, finding the places that the breath fills with sensation. Where is the breath happening in you now? Breathing in a full expanse of an inhale and notice what moves. The mind may move into judging it or predicting it or questioning it. Simply see that as the nature of mind and bring it back. Just feel it. And after the inhale, an exhale arrives. And what is that like? Has your mind stayed? Or has it wandered to the past or the future? Something else coming after this. That's not here now. And so we bring the mind back again. And we find that breath. Breathing in, there's a knowing of breathing in. And breathing out, there's a knowing of breathing out. And perhaps we see again that the mind has moved and wandered off. This is the nature of a brain that thinks. 
this is the default. And yet, with practice, we see it happening. We return it to right here, right now. Consider this returning a mental rep, like a bicep curl. Trust and know that you're training. You're training and practicing and strengthening the brain to stay in the present moment. This is the place where we live life. Right here, right now. Breathing in, we become energized and renewed. Breathing out, we become soothed and calmed and connected. May the benefit of this practice go beyond this one practicing and be of service to all beings everywhere. <laughs>